Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. This is a review I've been meaning to do forever because I feel like this is one of the most important movies of our time, which might sound crazy because it's an obscure little flick that many people probably never saw. You know, it's a cult classic type of movie that people in the know, people that have discovered it, can quickly see it's a commentary on our reality and it's a commentary on entire philosophical systems including basically the Gnostic system um, but you will also see elements of Buddhism and so many other in this movie and this movie is so key and those of you that are flat earthers people that believe the earth is flat well here is probably the only circumstance wherein I would agree if we are living in this situation and we did not know it. It's a great movie. It really is. Um, it's such a deep philosophical commentary and very entertaining and uh, hardly recommended. This came out in 1998 and it was the movie that they believe inspired The Matrix to be made. And it's not, it starts with basically the lead character who is played by Rufus Sewell. And he just wakes up in this disgusting looking bathroom in a nasty, gnarly looking tub. And he has no memory, no recollection of who he is. And, and see, that there's so many statements on our reality. So right off the bat, it's like you could look at this as birthing. And here we are boom we're born into a world and we can't remember who we are and right off the bat he feels something's wrong he has glimpses and flashes of memories that just pop up but he doesn't even know who he is he has to ask who am I you know he doesn't even know who he is but yet there is something in his core that is just beckoning him and letting him know that things aren't what they are you know seem to be reality is not quite right there is something wrong here this just does not feel right so it's it's really such a cool movie to watch unfold one of the things with him you know he is somebody that can see past the illusions and especially as the movie goes on he starts to figure things out while everybody else is totally asleep most of our world is completely asleep. They are just sleepwalking. And there's so many movies out there, and I think most of the zombie movies are really talking about the, the masses, the, the, the bulk of the population being nothing but zombies because they are totally unaware of the fact that the reality they live in is an illusion that's been manufactured to keep them in a certain mindset. And so, for instance, in one scene, he's, he's speaking to one of the other main characters who is like a police officer that's investigating a murder of which he, he suspects that the main character is the murderer. And the ma main character here, Rufus Sewell, says to him, haven't you noticed there's no sun, that it's always night? And the main character, um, you know, he's noticed this, even though his mind has been apparently you know wiped clean besides a few trickling memories that come through but he sees it whereas the other characters are oblivious to the fact that the sun never rises it's always dark it's always dark hence dark city but people are completely unaware of this and he has these memories of shell beach and sunlight and blue skies and ocean and birds and he has other memories of childhood and pleasant memories but there's just something wrong there you know he he just feels like it's it's an illusion there's something wrong and so this movie is so it's so gnostic in so so many ways for sure. I mean, because the whole thing feels like a dream world. It feels completely like a dream world. And Rufus Sewell's character here, 
um, he's able to pick up on that where everybody else is just oblivious. Now he sees her and that triggers more memories. And of course he's entranced by her and uh, she's a sultry singer that he just feels there's a connection with but yet her programming isn't something that he felt right off the bat was the truth and you know it's like I, I don't want to give away all the details of the movie because I really want you guys to go and watch it but at the same time I mean I'm going to cover some of the major things in it um, so I'll leave some of it for you guys to uncover anyway but it's it's just such a, a good movie that will really get you thinking, especially all my fellow co-conspirator nuts that realize that we do live in a matrix, that we do live in a manufactured reality that's controlled by some strangers as this movie portrays them. And these are some of the strangers that strike fear into humans and they have the uncanny ability just to look at a, a person and tell them sleep and they'll sleep. And then they could do whatever they want to that person. And so we have these strangers who appear to be human-ish, but creepy <laughs> for sure. And they are doing experiments on the entire population in this case. Every single man, person, child on Dark City is part of the experiment. And these experiments are the whole reason for everything it's all basically something that the strangers are trying to figure out because humans have emotions that they don't have humans are just different than them and they can't quite understand us so every night they stop the world every night they rearrange the world in different ways. Through the power of their mind, they can make the buildings rise and fall. And in one scene, you see a couple that's impoverished, you know, living in a dump and, you know, eating bowls of slop, you know, that that's all they could afford to eat. And then the, the strangers make everybody go to sleep every night at a certain time, right, right around midnight, boom. Everybody just falls asleep no matter what's going on and no matter what's happening. All the cars stop, trains stop, everything stops. Everybody sleeps. And then the strangers rearrange the entire world using the powers of their mind. They call it tuning. And they have the aid of giant machines that rearrange the city. And so they'll they take people like that poor couple and then they rearrange it so that now they're all of a sudden living in a mansion and they're ultra rich and they're eating like 10 course meals you know out of fine china and sipping the best wine and they do this in order to find out what's at the core what if you took a poor person and made them rich would they all of a sudden change because of the wealth or would they still basically be a good person if they had evil inclinations when they were poor, would they become, you know, good when they're rich or vice versa? Just to see, you know, is the soul, is the entity a certain way independent of its circumstances? So they're forever changing circumstances and husbands and wives will become brothers and sisters. And then they'll become people that didn't even know each other and then see how they interact. So they change every societal structure they change every relationship and just basically play with people and test them and see and you know of course you can see how this echoes through a lot of different books like say the book of job being tested um or of course if you get into the nag hammadi text it's very very much like the archons these these guys are just like the arconic forces that are playing with humans and feeding off them in various ways so it's a fascinating fascinating concept and i mean i've watched this movie many times since i own it and each time i feel like a deeper sense of getting it you know Kiefer sutherland who you know one of my favorite actors there uh, he's great he plays this you know 
mad scientist character who is fully human and who is working with the strangers and injecting in the humans different things in this, this this serum he injects them with a little bit of like wealth a little bit of intellect a little bit of power a little bit of ego you know it, and so he could change people's identities give them new identities and that's part of the whole thing which he does as they experiment on the people and then basically what we head towards is as our lead character keeps discovering more and more we find that he's exceptional or he appears to be exceptional anyway so in some ways he's like neo in the matrix or you could look at him as a messianic type of figure or we don't even know exactly why he's different they never really get into that why is he more awake than others do the others have the same potential as he does it's it's something that isn't really clearly uh, answered but as he grows in power he ends up killing some of these uh, strangers and eventually it ends up becoming a giant battle between the head of the strangers and Murdoch who is the main character and Murdoch to the strangers horror has the ability to tune like they do so he has psychic powers that the strangers have that no other human has ever shown and when the strangers are killed it turns out they're not even really human they're kind of this energetic cross between like an insect and some sort of crab uh, crustacean like being you know so they're almost rem rem reminiscent of like the early alien when the aliens in the movie alien are first like going and coming out of bodies except for a little bit more clear and maybe a little more electromagnetic feeling but so we find out and discover that the aliens are not humanoid they are actually just using the bodies of the dead humans they're reanimating the bodies of the dead humans to inhabit so they're not even humanoid in reality. And so at the climatic uh, climax of the movie, John Murdoch, realizing that he has all these powers and you know he's growing exponentially in power, faces off against the head alien in this massive psychic warfare in which he ends up destroying the head alien destroying everything that you know gave the aliens power and then we get to see really what's kind of going on here it's the fact that it wasn't even a planet in the first place it was just simply a gigantic spaceship and here's here's your flat earthers this is the only way i would believe that we're living on a flat earth is that the fact that you know it's been basically a giant ship the whole time and it's not even a planet that we're on so maybe there are other planets and other stars and stuff are real but the planet that we are on is nothing but a gigantic spaceship and that's what it turns out to be a flat disk in the sky and these giant machines underneath it that can rearrange it and change it at will and that's guided by the powers of the mind and so in the climax at the end of the movie Murdoch turns the ship because the whole time it was facing away from a sun we don't even know if it's our sun or if it's just a sun but it turns it towards the sun so that the world is no longer dark and the, dar the darkness is dissolved in the light because the strangers were of the darkness and they cannot tolerate the light so the light destroys them but the humans are fine and the humans thrive in the light and so he turns the spaceship to face the sun and creates that heaven on earth that he always wanted that beautiful bright world and of course he ends up having his love interest and everything is happily ever after so a fantastic movie really on many deep esoteric levels so is this our reality um, 
what are your guys thoughts on this and again please do go out and watch this movie because it's it's way shorter than watching the whole matrix series and yet gives you the same sort of info in probably like a minute and i mean an hour and 40 minutes something like that it's not even that long of a movie um but very powerful for those of you that are able to see into the matrix and those of you that are conspiracy nuts and alien believers very very interesting movie very very thought-provoking um hardly recommended look forward to your comments on this and uh flat earthers is this what you uh, believe in is this what you believe in that we're on just a spaceship in that case i would put it as a slate possibility but what are your thoughts please thumbs up help support the channel share and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and join our growing family and i thank you all for visiting and joining me here at evolutionary energy arts truly appreciate you guys and love reading your comments Take care.